all this is the exercise six tutorial and it's about routing errors and when you are doing system calculations with on embedded systems um okay basically the exercise starts with the notch band filter but it's the same see or quite similar to the last exercise of filters um and the second one uh, it's about filter coefficients and uh, if you have only eight bits for calculations i know this is a little bit drastic nobody uses eight bit processors anymore since the arm processors actually are pretty cheap on new designs but anyways this is educational. <laughs> um, the next one is to have a, it's an elliptic filter. So practically it's the same as somewhat similar to this. So sixth order elliptic filter, you will see some, uh, basically you should start seeing some things, either it's direct form, or how many bits you should use if the system was a direct form compared to second order system implementation. Um, I'll you give you some hints there, I'm going to estimate that. Then basically the next part is approximation. Remember, this is an engineering class. This is not science class. So approximate, estimate how many arithmetic operations the previous filter takes. So uh, how many add operations, how many multiply operations, how many move load or store operations, uh, how many function calls or branches. Um, assuming that the filter coefficients are immediate values on code, meaning just constant values on the code. Um, okay, and then I have a question to you. Uh, what is your favorite embedded systems processor platform? In Metropoly, we're using that MPC processor LPC 1768, which is, oh, well, it's quite old old already, but anyways, it, it has ARM Cortex M3 processor. So which processor, are, uh, which uh, embedded platform are you actually using? I'm quite sure that it's also ARM processor. Could somebody tell me, for example, on this course, on this, uh, the, the embedded systems programming part. Anyone? I think we all got the board and no one have the idea what's the exact name of the controller that's on the board. Okay, but anyways, you know what processor it has, right? What kind of processor it does have? It's usually ARM processors on those, some ARM, but which, which core? Okay, there's something for you to find out. <laughs> Anyways, this is a practical, the seventh exercise is a practical. I don't care if it's for some, some other uh, development board or some other processor directly. You can do this exercise for any processor where you can just find information. Uh, in here, I have it in that LPC 7068 NPX yeah. processor. Which actually, has... uh, I, am. I just grabbed the board and uh -huh. the M set, but like it's, there like, yeah, several numbers on it. I have which one, yeah. okay. I'm not sure which one is the right one. Okay, can you? So, 
let me do 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 uh could you take a picture of that one and and post it somewhere i can take a look at it oh sure yeah actually if i give you the uh, okay yeah uh, yeah put it somewhere i will take a look at it send it as email or something I can take a look at it and uh, guesstimate what it is. But anyway, so um, you can do the calculation or actually optionally. I think you want to also do the implementation. So if you do the filter implementation in your processor platform, full implementation, then you can quite easily, uh, you probably have a good debugging uh, tool chain there. So you can actually also do measurements there with the debugging tool. So uh, run this filter with, uh, with um, some dummy data uh, for, uh, for, for example, one million cycles or so. And then take uh, take the time how long it takes to process one million data samples. That actually gives you the number how fast the processor does the MAC operations for that filter. Okay, and that gives you basically you, then you can estimate how many channels you can run on, uh, wait, wait a minute, at 22 kilohertz sampling rate. Okay, and then the uh, last one is, uh, last exercise is basically to calculate how many channels you can call, uh, do on your laptop. So easy. And this is the brute force way. So uh, basically experimental is the only way you can do any estimation on pieces. Calculations are useless since the operation system can do whatever it please. But um, anyway, so there's a hint to uh, calculate, measure the elapsed time using fun function tick and talk. Don't take TikTok movies, but you know, what's it, tick tack. Okay, this is tick and talk. I'll show you some examples how to do it. Um, okay, take a quick look at it. Actually, I just have to I put, just put it on my Google Drive so I can just post the link and chat. So, okay. oh, yeah, yeah, that will I be think that's the great. easiest so, way. Yes, that's the easiest, that is the, the easiest way. Good. So, the link on the chat. Excellent. Wow. Yeah, I hope it's, it's... arm. Actually, the quality went yes. okay. so much down by posting yeah. it on Google Drive. It was yeah. like yeah. it's all readable on my phone, and now it's okay. So it's uh, STM32L100C is the processor. Yeah, and you can find the uh, basically the, the these uh, details from the Silicon Thompson website. There's even the website already there www.stcom stm32 l1 discovery <laughs> it's way too easy <laughs> okay you, you, i'm yeah. actually blind yeah 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 exactly <laughs> um all right so take a look at that uh, that website stm32 100C. Okay, I can actually change that one or some other <laughs> STM32 
32L under 100C. Oh, that was L. Uh, I'm guessing it's Cortex M3, but if it's something else, you can actually find the, this uh, similar instruction set tables as this one from this, this address. So actually this is the, okay. There's the instruction set table, including including also the, um, how many clock cycles. <laughs> or oh, instruction cycles, not clock cycles, but instruction cycles. Does it take? Good. Everything set for that that exercise. Except I should show you something. Right. Right. Um, I'm just thinking since the last I had the same session for Finnish students. I could actually just run these, but not as a fun part. So yeah, I think I'm doing like that. So I have an example system, just any any system. I make an elliptic system. Um, and as you can see, I'm using Octave. Last time the secure desktop top failed and this time they are actually making some system changes on the uh, secure desktop. I started half an hour ago, so I'm not touching it now. This works a little bit more stably. But anyways, example system, sampling rate. Uh, F9, yes, sampling rate. Of 2000 samples per second, and for a system which has cut off frequency of 200. For the LLIP, uh, you're using most probably the uh, filter designer tool, which has the, this nice graphical user interface. Yes, use that one. You can even do the quantization there. On the left hand side, there's a uh, uh, these small icons and the icon that looks like a, a staircase. Behind of that one, you can change this, uh, the, the uh, precision, uh, calculation precision for fixed point. So you can use that one, or actually you can use also these native commands. They, uh, the functions are not necessarily exactly the same though. Okay, but for this one, I will use the um, cutoff normalized frequency, set it to 200. Uh, well, this is on angular uh, normalized frequency range, and then just design the filter. Yeah, ellip 12th order, one. Uh, one decibel ripple on passband and 60 decibel attenuation. And then this, uh, uh, the cutoff frequency as the uh, normalized angular frequency. And then I can check if this is what I want. So this is my example system. What happened? I didn't, error. Yeah, hey, I did the same error as, as on my earlier. Yeah, now it works a little bit. Oops. Ah. Okay. And then I need to take care of that. Good. So this is my filter design. One uh, decibel ripple, 60 decibels, 
and 12th order, meaning this is a very steep filter. Um, now, first, I will show you that this uh, floating point filter, even that one may have some trouble on the calculations if you design it as as a um, um, direct form using that calculating only that uh, uh, the, the frequency uh, calculating everything on one single section, not second order sections, but a huge 20th order section, sim single 20th order section. Okay. 20th order, I'll show you a couple of things here. Uh, here we have, first of all, that part. It's us to deteriorate this uh, frequency response on passband. This is not, this might be actually still to tolerable, but that one, if you're missing amplitude response points on on the graph, it usually means, I will take a different view here. Um, okay. It usually means that, um, uh, first of all, let's take a look at this. What does the data look like? The main reason is here. Look at the difference in order of magnitude. The order of magnitude between the first and the middle part coefficient is something like 16 bits. So you might think that that might actually uh, start to have trouble even with this. Uh, floating point precision numbers. But anyways, rounding error does bad things. And uh, let's take a look at C plane of VBAA in its own figure. That's a zero plot. Whoa, what has happened to the system? 20th order. Uh, okay, in MATLAB, you don't necessarily see this because it directly uh, uses the second order system for designing the, these uh, IIR systems which means that the zeros, uh, the poles are remaining inside of the unit circle. This um, the octal has, say, less developed uh, the, the, uh, this filter design subroutines. And you can see what happens when you are doing the uh, filter design in first order, uh, or this uh, direct form structure. So even the floating point starts to deteriorate when this uh, uh, the when the order numbers goes high. Okay, 20 is a lot. Okay, I, I, it's usually you don't need 20th order filter. But anyways, uh, if you see this sort of behavior that you're missing some data on the amplitude response, it usually means that uh, the system is unstable. Then the float of this um, amplitude response cannot be calculated. Okay, then about the routing error. How to do the routing error? Let me get back to some say reasonable number. So I continue with eighth order elliptic uh, 
IIR filter with the same parameters, so normalized frequency. Um, okay, normalized frequency, and um, let me plot once the, uh, with, since I know my cutoff rate. Hey, wait a minute, what happened? Ah, F C, not F C, F S. Yes, sampling rate, yeah, 200 hertz was my cut of frequency, oops, and then yeah, 60 dB, and I twist rate at to 1000 hertz, yep, fits well. Good, okay, let's continue on this one, my example, how to quantize the parameters. <clears throat> First, I will calculate the range. By the way, this way, what I'm showing you, usually I uh, lose the uh, pass band that usually it's unity gain uh, system uh, for pass band, uh, but I just omit that uh, the total gain of the system. So we will be actually seeing some changes on the total gain, but that's the easiest uh, parameter to fix from the filter. You have done it already so many times. So there, the first, um, we calculate the range for all that parameters. So maximum and minimum. Okay, I, I, this is the way you get the best, best, best possible resolution for your, for your system coefficients. You take as, uh, and spread the values from minimum to maximum in between the range of your fixed point values. It's actually the same thing what you do Let's go to the very first slides. Oh, that was the signals. Very first slides, okay, that one. Well, mm -hmm. the signal, on analog signal, you amplify it and it's a sample for the uh, AGD AG converter. So basically you take that small signal and fit it in between the minimum of maximum of HOD converter. Okay, so this what what, what you are doing for these uh, filter coefficients to get the maximum resolution for calculation is that you fit the minimum and maximum between the, the, the full range of your uh, number representation. Okay, so first you calculate these uh, ranges and then rounding to the nearest 8-bit value. So divide it, now round, um, and this actually, yeah, so you uh, scale it by, divide it by NDB. So after that, you have plus minus uh, the, the this BB is between plus minus one, and that's actually then you multiply it with uh, two to the power seven, meaning two to the bit accuracy minus one, since this is plus and minus. Okay, so that way. So, and then we have the values within 8-bit integer. So let me see what these look like. All right, those are integer values. Could be used in, uh, in multiplications of two integers, as long as you make sure that the, the result will fit into 
longer word. And by the way, making this one fixed point means that you will just have that presentation. If you don't have the fixed point uh, support on your on, on your uh, compiler, then you need to do everything in integer and think where the these decimal points actually are. But that's basically the the this binary number or fixed point and integer are exactly the same, and and they are these uh, just how to do the calculations. Uh, for multiplication, you just multiply and fix the uh, this decimal point. On addition, you align the data with a decimal point first, and then just do the addition. Simple operations. Okay, so those are now rounded numbers, definitely. And then let's take a look what. What it what the oops what this one actually does eight bits sixth order filter whoa no face see this still has the face the shape and face response doesn't show up any phase response here and also the uh, this is not even close to what it's supposed to be so my guess again is that My guess again is that we have, oh, uh, yeah, that one, that we don't have a stable filter. Yep, nothing even close to the stable. And now we have the eight fi order filter. Let me show the, the filter coefficients. And, oh, they're there. So this is the original floating point, zeros and poles. Still stable, uh, okay, those couple of poles here get really close to the unit circle, but they are still inside. No, nothing to worry about in here. Wow, that went haywire. Okay, but when we do the uh, uh, quantization and we still have the first order system, we end up having quite bad. Uh, the, the zeros and poles are going haywire, and especially some of these poles are going outside of the unit circle and one on the unit circle. So it's a useless system, so to speak. We have to do something about that now. And uh, one way is to basically go and <clears throat> uh, trying to solve by changing the word length. Okay. So here's the, I'm trying to solve it by changing the word length. Um, so 12 bit, for example. Um, and see what happens. Oh, oops. Okay, went to the first figure. Uh, it changed, but didn't change enough. So I would guess it is still unstable. Uh, let's see what happens for 16 bit arithmetic. Okay. Now we are getting closer. Closer, 
six, with the 16 bit arithmetic, it's already a low pass filter, some sort of arm. Um, let's take, for example, 24 bits. Of course, this could be, say, smaller numbers. Okay. Um, yeah. I would be quite satisfied with that filter. It's a low pass filter. It has still some problems at the end of the, this one, but it's within the, um, okay, it's within the uh, requirement. So we had one decibel passband ripple requirement. Okay, that's one decibels here. That's minus one decibel from the, uh, uh, from from the, the average. Okay, so with 24 bits, we have a useful filter. All right, let's, so that's how you find basically if the filter starts, uh, uh, how many bits you need for a filter. And this was using this, uh, uh, one single block of direct form filtering. Then we start breaking the direct form into cascaded second order systems. Uh, on, as I said, on this um, tool, what you have, and if you use that uh, staircase tool for this, uh, fixing the point, you actually have to uh, transform. If you want to see the uh, direct form filter behavior, you first need to use a setting up on the, on the upper menu, I think it's under edit, uh, to change, transform the filter to direct form. If it's an IIR filter on that uh, filter designer tool, then you basically need to change it to the direct form by hand. Otherwise, that's the, since it's, it's a tool for engineers, of course, it shows first the, uh, uh, what you should do, not, it's not to educational purpose. It's more about doing things the correct way. So if you want to do things the wrong way, you need to click some of these uh, settings <laughs> or do it by hand like I'm doing it here. Uh, but anyways, so cascaded second order systems, there is a function. It's also in MATLAB, it's a TF to SOS. Transfer filter to OSS, something like that, the name comes from. And basically, it gives the uh, so called SOS matrix. Not sure what it looks like for this system. Okay, I start from the original floating point system. Okay, I still have that design. And for this. Uh, this TF to SOS function actually gives me is the SOS matrix. First row, we have parameters B, first three values, and then uh, parameters A for the first section. The second section parameters, third section parameters, and fourth section parameters. This was eight order filter. And as you can see, the second order section parameters are in the same order of magnitude. That's nice. So the rounding, uh, relative <coughs> rounding error is much, much smaller. <clears throat> okay, so now I have the, uh, this matrix. Uh, SOS matrix and also the global gain. Uh, okay, I don't care about the gain. Uh, on your implementation, you need to care about the gain at some point. 
to make sure that the whole system is actually the, the uh, uh, has the correct gain, uh, which means actually that you may need to um, implement this gain section somewhere on the way so that you adjust the decimal point while you are adding things or multiplying things. Basically, yeah, most of that gain, total gain can be adjusted just by, uh, by little by little by adjusting the decimal point. But that's more of like an art, art, art. Okay. Um, then finding the maximum. All right. So what happens here? I'm not sure how much you have been working with the MATLAB. So that one forces that matrix into single column and taking the absolute value and the maximum of the absolute values. It could also be max, max, abs, h, o, s. So uh, first, first maximum value would give you the uh, maximum of each row, and the second maximum would give you the maximum of those. But anyways, this is one way of doing it, Cal uh, taking the uh, maximum of the whole matrix. And OK, it should work for all of those rows. They are not that much different, the variables. So the one single single maximum for scaling should be doing just fine. OK, the next one here, I'm, I'm actually uh, okay. doing the quantization into 8-bit. 8-bit quantization, oops. Um, ah, no, I didn't. Oh, okay, I should also run that line, I think, right? Yeah, better. Okay, now I have integer SOS metrics. Should be used as a part of the course. Um, then SOS matrix, uh, still okay, what should I do? Okay. Ah, yeah, so yes, so these are the, uh, just to say, okay, which parameters would be on each, so cascaded, so those were the, are the two first blocks, so if you would be implementing it, would be filter, filter, BB1, BB2, X, uh, and then actually BB, oh, not BB2, <laughs> what am I doing here? AA1, BB2, AA2. So the in, uh, input for the second stage would be the same as the output of the first stage and so on. So that will be the cascaded system implementation. Okay. Okay, and then now we did this um, frequency response. Uh, so, so the, now we have the system coefficients, quantized system coefficients. We quantized those in SOS, but for checking what happened to the filter, uh, in here I need to go back to the first order. If you are using MATLAB, then actually uh, it directly shows this uh, the performance of the filter with the quantization values. That's directly there. But this is the octave thing. It doesn't have all the the uh, tools what you have in MATLAB. So, so this is 
just to test the uh, frequency response. What does it do? Old school. Okay, so uh, I take that SOS quantized SOS matrix and make the SOS to tier. So that actually goes back to the direct form. Okay, and the, I have the values uh, BBSOSQ and AACOSQ. And what does the frequency response look like? Ha! That's almost perfect. Only that this, uh, uh, the gain is different. But anyways, it's almost perfect filter. Let's take it here. Just take the original so that we can compare. So this one was where we started. This one was where we started at, and this lower one is where we ended up with eight bit quantized filter coefficients. So we use 8-bit arithmetics. Okay, 8-bit arithmetics compared uh, with the direct form, you need 24-bit arithmetic. This is a big difference. Okay. Um, when you're doing this uh, calculations of testing, how many bits you would need to do the calculations, um, then you can easily play with the MATLAB. Uh, just change that uh, with the uh, word length, and the MATLAB does the rest. If you are doing it like this, then you need to do the quantization in the right place. Okay. else okay where was where was I okay there here this way matrix response yep and the same thing the seven seven bit reminder that this one was the direct form filter with eight bits and this one is the direct form of uh, the, the SOS system with eight bits which one would you use not a brainer okay good Um, so, how to test the elapsed time for measurement of the speed? This is how I would do it. This is a brute force method, works on MATLAB. Uh, first, I make some dummy data, one million points of dummy data, and then simply run tick, any command, and talk. So this measures the elapsed time. Tick starts the timer, whatever happens in between, then talk shows, uh, stops the timer and tells you how many uh, seconds did it actually take. So here, tick, talk. If you run this, few times you can guesstimate what is the roughly the uh, uh, average value or the worst case value. In this exercise, I'm looking for ballpark numbers, not exact numbers. 
So basically, this is the brute force method of uh, finding out how fast the system does things. So now I have got one million operations or max in about 16 milliseconds. So 16 milliseconds divided by 1 million. This is how many uh, okay, this is how many max it can do or, or the, uh, let's see not max but how many samples it does no how long it takes for one single sample okay if we have for example uh, 22 or 5 hertz uh, sample rate this actually gives me the value how many uh, how long one single channel would do uh, take and this value is how many channels I can do channel meaning thread single input single input okay so about 2800 channels yep laptops are pretty darn fast for uh, this kind of filtering. Well, this this has some quad core gigahertz. Well, it runs on ah very fast clock. I think it's two point some gigahertz clock. Quad core with floating point units. And actually, if it's optimized, then it actually uses the graphic acceleration for this uh, this uh, this kind of calculations, which I do not know. On MATLAB, MATLAB uses the graphic acceleration card for floating point operations, if possible. Automatically, you don't need to care about that one. So if you do the same same you can actually compare the MATLAB performance and your Octave performance. Usually MATLAB is about twice faster, twice, two times faster than Octave on floating point operations. But okay, 2,800, that will be a lot, a lot of data to, to calculate. Okay. Um, I think there was also field SOS on, was there? Ah, oh, yes, there were, there was, there was, there was. And let me show you something since, okay, this one was for a system which was this, um, Um, direct form. Okay, so what happens when you take the second order system? Okay, uh, since that is the final, final, uh, the, the uh, final uh, goal to have second order system. So um, I think that's also in MATLAB. When you do the performance calculations, you should actually do it with the same parameters. So basically, I would guess that will give you more realistic value. So it's much slower. Second order systems. Why it's so much slower? Actually, it's about four times slower. And that's the overhead, what you need to pay. Uh, when you're doing SOS systems, you get uh, about 30% uh, more calculations. On 
single eighth order section, you do 18 multiply accumulation operations. Eight, yeah, and not 18, six, 70. So direct form eighth order. Eight plus eight plus one. No, wait a minute. Eighth order, you do nine multiplications. Yes. Nine plus eight, 17. And S always, eighth order. You do actually four sections times three parameters on both. So, uh, so that will be five max. That's 20 max, max operations. So you have more operations. And in addition to that, you actually are um, also the uh, this, this uh, overhead time for the branching and passing the parameter uh, passing the values will take more time okay so that actually add up in this case it's about four times slower to have it on sos but on the other hand uh, do I need to remind you if you are don't have this um, floating point unit and must do this uh, quantization? You don't have much choice because that was the eighth order direct form quantized values. Okay. So that was the uh, this embedded systems uh, the, the tutorial for for uh, exercise. You should be now able to uh, do well the first one. And stop notch filter. Um, by the way, if you want to have the notch frequency change, what is the change of angle? Uh, just reminder that, for example, here, zeros and poles of all the system, BBAA, let me make that BBAA something. Else, well, that's just fine. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Zeros of um, zeros of the system are the roots of polynomial B, and poles are the roots of polynomial A. Okay, there you go. If you want to know the angles of these zeros and poles, then it's you simply say. Z equals uh, angle ZZ. And this, this is times pi. This is um, a base, oh, no, not times pi, but this is the uh, minus pi to pi. The corresponding frequencies for those uh, zero locations there would be divided by two times pi multiplied by f of s. Okay, those are the frequencies. And now you can actually, if you calculate the angles like from the zeros and poles and compare these with this, uh, uh, what cha changes make, then you get really accurate values. Okay, 
but of course you can always uh, just eyeball it from the figure. Just make sure that your figure has enough of resolution. Uh, so yeah, expand it a little bit, calculate more points there so you can see the fine details. All right, any questions? If not, thank you for being here. I will stop the recording.